What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and we've partnered with Tractor Tools Direct to bring you some hay baling content this summer. And if you're not familiar with Tractor Tools Direct, they are a supplier of equipment for subcompact, compact, and utility tractors. What they provided us is a drum mower. This is the Ibex 130 mower, dual drum mower that we have on our Kubota L3901 tractor. It's a 38 horsepower tractor with 32 horsepower coming out of the PTO. This mower can be used with smaller tractors with horsepower down as low as I think 18. I'll put up on the screen what the specs actually are, but we put this on a smaller tractor and it's a pretty big mower and we think this Kubota larger frame tractor can handle it better. We're gonna show you this mower in transport mode, then we're gonna put the blades on it, and then we're gonna do a little cutting. It's still winter and our pastures aren't ready to be cut yet, but we do have a one acre field in the back that was planted in grains, and they're tall enough that we might be able to show this mower in action. I've already got the mower in the transport mode, which is directly behind the tractor. Later, we'll show you that it swings sideways and it actually cuts next to the tractor. To put it in transport mode, there's a lever over here that we'll show you in a minute. This breakaway bar is stowed here in transport mode and in operation mode, it'll actually attach over here. So it's not doing anything in transport mode except sitting here. We also have this stop here that you have to put in transport mode. So normally when you're cutting, the stop will be back here and it'll allow this mower to float up and down on this spring. But in transport mode, you'll put it here so that it'll limit the travel when you're going over bumps. We'll switch over to this side of the mower and you have this lever right here that's attached to a nut and you'll just tighten that and that doesn't allow these drums to move. You'll loosen this up in operation mode. The first lever we talked about is this lever right here and you pull this up and when you do, it disengages from this hole right here and it allows the mower to swing. But in transport mode, you want that down and actually put a little bit of grease right here to make that easier to go up and down. And then there's two more things to talk about here. One, you have your blade installation tool and we'll show you how that works. That sits right here. And then this is a stand that when you disconnect it from the tractor keeps it from falling over. So in mowing mode or travel mode, you'll want this in the up position. And I think that covers it. Everything else is simply three-point hitch attachment and the PTO shaft to the tractor. Now that we got everything in transport mode, we're gonna transport it to a flatter part of the pasture and show you how to set it up for mowing and put the blades on it. The mower comes with this yellow skirting that's on there for safety. It attaches to the bars we've already installed on the tractor. We're gonna leave that off for mowing today. And the reason you want that yellow skirt around here is because these blades are gonna be exposed and you don't want your pets or anything getting close. Now, these bars will kind of keep things away, but with that yellow skirt around here, it'll be harder to get to the blades, but it also will be a good visual reference for safety. You see something big and uh, red and yellow coming at you, you might stay away from it. But now let's put the blades on. When you buy a drum motor from Tractor Tools Direct, it's gonna come in a crate and there's some assembly involved. And we showed how to assemble this drum mower right out of the crate to the condition it's in now and also did a video on how to cut the PTO shaft to size it to your tractor. So be sure to check out those videos so you can get A to Z on how to go from a crated drum mower to one that's in operation. But one thing that doesn't come assembled is the blades. And the blades go on real easy. The instructions for assembling this mower and also putting these blades on are very clear. And uh, Tractor Tools Direct did a great job with that. Probably the best I've seen with any manufacturer out there. But there's six blades, three per drum, and you actually don't need any tools other than the tool that they provided with the machine. They're double bladed, but they're beveled with a hole on one side. They're stamped on the top so you know which way to put them. And like I said earlier, there's no bolts involved, just that tool to release a spring and then these slide right in a slot and then they're installed. But I'm gonna go look at the instructions to make sure I said all that right. I double check the instructions and the blades in fact go like this with the angle down on both sides and then this hole goes inside of a spring clip in here and the tool that they provide you, the two lands go up under this lip and this goes in that hole and what that does is that pushes the spring down and then you put the blade in. So we'll lift this up and hold it. So now I can see where it attaches. I put the blade over that. That blade is installed. 
and you make sure that it moves loosely. And that is the blade of a drum mower. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, but it's hard with one person, so this is how I did it. I laid on my back, and I pushed up here, and held it, pushed the blade in, and that's how quick you change a blade on this Ibex drum mower. All right, I've got um, four more to put in. You helping? <laughs> you helping? You can also do it by feel. So rather than lay on your back as I did in the last one, you can be up here where you can get more leverage. And then you can feel the peg that it goes on. And then that one's on there. And then I didn't have to crawl under the mower. So like most things, there's multiple ways you can do it. This seems to be the best way. Even when moving the camera, I probably have no more than two minutes invested and putting on those six blades. And now let's set this mower up for operation by swinging it out and making all the adjustments. Now to get it ready for cutting mode, the first thing we'll do is take this lever I showed you earlier, lift it up and it pulls that pin out of that hole right there. Now we're just gonna swing the mower sideways and everything is set up so the PTO shaft pulls out and it's just real easy to pull by hand. Now we'll put on that breakaway bar so this breakaway bar goes from the stowed position. You just swing it around and then adjust your mower so it goes over there. And what that does is if your mower hits something like a tree or a post, this will actually break away and let the mower go back in the transport mode. And it's got two lands that attach together and they'll just slip past each other. Speaking of slipping past each other, <laughs> Miss Piney Grove just grabbed the camera. If you come in here closer, babe, we'll show them this. So this lever here was also transport mode, so you'll flip that over there. And then also, we'll loosen this up, and now the mower can travel up and down. Now this is spring-loaded here. Well, you can see that it adjusts there as it goes over uneven ground. And what's interesting about this mower is it doesn't float. Like, uh, I have it suspended. The way that you'll operate this mower, I'm gonna let down the hydraulics or the three-point hitch. You'll let it down till the drums are just barely wet, resting on the ground. And then you adjust your top link, and I guess you would extend your top link and you tilt the mower back just a bit so the blades don't hit the ground. And that's how you mow, you kind of drag it around. I always thought they, say they stayed suspended like an inch or so above the ground, but then they wouldn't be able to follow the ground. And the way they're able to follow the ground is because there's a spring inside this box uh, tube metal here and that allows it just to float. And uh, it's set up for mowing. To reiterate from this angle, what you want is that mower to be tilted this way so as you're going forward, it doesn't dig in. And you do that by extending your top link. Actually, my top link is fully extended. There's only, say, seven threads holding it in. I just measured it. Uh, this is a 29 inch max length top link and I probably need about a 30. So I have more threads inside the top link and I can extend it further if I need it. But this is as far as I can extend this top link. It'll be good enough for today's demonstration though. We don't have a lot to cut back here, but it should be enough to do a maiden voyage on this mower after assembly and make sure we've got it all put together right. And just look at those fine tuning and tweakings that you have to do with all farm equipment. Put it in operation mode. See if I got the right angle here. I'll adjust that as I go. What we don't want is the drums leaning forward and these blades hitting dirt. That'll quickly dull the blades and you wanna get as much acreage as possible before you change your blades. This is called a drum conditioning mower. So if this grass was taller, what you'd see is all of the cuttings come through the center here and hit these sharp lands that are angled up and it actually would kind of lay it over top like like that in a crisscross pat pattern. And what that does is it allows it to dry better than say a sickle bar mower that just cuts it low and then it just falls over and lays flat on the ground. This actually will kind of tet it a little bit and raise it off the ground so it'll dry better and quicker. That's the first time we've spun the drums since we've had it put together and they spin pretty fast. So let's take a shot at mowing. It's a little bit thicker up there, but you can see we don't have a lot of height here on our grains in the back, but we got enough to demonstrate the mower. 
There's going to be a lot of learning going on in this part of the video. And by learning, I mean learning by me. When those blades were spinning, I can see why you want the curtain around there. You don't want anything getting close to those blades. Woo, doggy. Now I realize another reason why there is a curtain or a skirt around there. All of that grass was coming up over me in the tractor and that skirt would have kept it in there. Another thing I noticed just in that very short mowing is if you have an uneven field, this is a tilled field that was tilled with a rototiller and um, it's not perfectly flat. Any place there's a little clump of dirt, it was definitely hitting the dirt. So these blades, even though they're probably hardened, I don't know how many acres they would last, but it would shorten the life hitting all that dirt. As far as the tractor pulling it or moving it, that seemed fine, but I only did a few feet. Let's do a little bit more. Right here, you can see where it hit the dirt right there. And it put dirt on the tractor, put dirt on the tractor dash, and all over the hood of the tractor. And of course, all over me. One thing that they point out is to make sure that this is at an angle and not perfectly flat. These mowers are intended to ride directly on the ground, but you don't want downward pressure. So we talked earlier about a spring in here. That spring allows the mower to float. And it's really hard to see because this is sloped ground, but this is probably the right angle of the tractor to the mower. And another thing I want to point out is you see this three point hitch area? It's tilted this way. And that's because there's so much weight out here that's hanging on this king pin right here that within the three point hitch pins and the balls on the end of your three point hitch lift arms, there's a little bit of play, and that's typical with all tractors. It has nothing to do with this Kubota, has nothing to do with this Ibex mower. But you'll notice that this is already angled down from the get-go. And I think what you have to do, because there's so much offset weight here, is you have to adjust your tractor lift arms so that this lift arm might be a little bit higher and get this level before you start. Almost like if you're using a two-bottom plow and you have your lift arms that are normally level, like when you're brush hogging, and you take one and lower it or lift it up. Either way to make them unbalanced. In this case, you would want the right side of the tractor higher to account for this weight that's out here. So I think that's something that I'll do later when we actually mow. And also this field has got a lot of clumps in it. It's very uneven and a pasture will be packed down from cattle or you driving across it from fertilizing it or previous cuttings. And while a pasture probably isn't perfect, it may have rolling hills and stuff to it. It won't have the clumps of dirt that I hit here that are like, you know, six inches in diameter. And it's just a, a dirt clod, so to speak, that's sticking up. And there's, you know, thousands of them here because this was tilled and planted and then left like that. It's never been smoothed or had any animals other than deer walk across it to kind of flatten it out. So not the best ground to demonstrate as far as the kicking dirt but we're gonna put the skirt on it and do a couple more passes just to show you how it works with the skirt on it. The skirting's on now, so this thing is fully assembled. And I'm glad that skirt's on. That'll keep stuff from flying up on me, but it also will prevent me from seeing the angle of the mower. So I'll have to use the top of the drum bracket here to see the angle and get that right. But at some point, I'm gonna get proficient enough that I'm just flying across the field and cutting and making hay. But that's going to wrap up today's video, folks. We sure appreciate you watching. If you would check out Tractor Tools Direct, they have a bunch of equipment out there for small tractor owners, and you might see something out there that you need for your place. But until next time, y'all take care out there, and remember, life's short, tractor hard.